This is part four in our series of lectures on section 2.2 and in this one we're going to show how to use a Venn diagram to suggest a counterexample to a given problem. So here's the exercise we're going to consider. Either prove true or give a counterexample to the statement that for all sets A, B, and C, if we take the set theoretic difference of A with the set theoretic difference of B and C, is that the same as first taking the set theoretic difference of A and B and taking the set theoretic difference of the result with C? So essentially we're just simply changing how we put the parentheses and uh, so it's a, it's a kind of associative law. So the question is, is it true or false? Uh, if you believe it's true, then you should try to prove it. And if you don't believe it's true, um, you should try to provide a counterexample. So in order to decide whether or not you believe it's true, you need to draw some Venn diagrams and um, just to get a sense of what's involved with these two things. So put your video on pause, and what you should do is make a general three-set Venn diagram, one that illustrates this, and then start over again and do one that illustrates this, and see if you believe that they're always going to be the same. And if you don't believe it, then your Venn diagram should suggest a counterexample to you. And so write down a counterexample. Um, if that's the case, write down a counterexample, and uh, that would then be your proof. So put your video on pause and, and go ahead and do that. Okay, so the question we ask ourselves is, is the a minus b minus c the same as a minus b minus c? Or is it possible to come up with sets a, b, and c for which that's not the case? In other words, a counterexample. So let's draw a general three-set Venn diagram, and we'll try to see what a minus b minus c looks like. So this is A, B, and C. B minus C is this part here. It's the part of B that doesn't have any of C in it. So I have to subtract this from A. And so that's going to be these three regions here. Okay, so that illustrates a minus B minus C. What about the other one, A minus B minus C? So A minus B minus C. So A minus B is the part of A that doesn't include any of B. So that's these two here. And from that, we have to take away C, and that means we don't get to draw this part. And so it just consists of this part here. Okay, so that's A minus B minus C. So now, you see, just because I draw the picture in this way, it doesn't mean that I'm saying that there has to be anything in these various eight regions. Uh, there may or may not be, but what the picture suggests is that if we arrange things so that there's either something in this region or something in this region, then there's no way that these two sets can be equal. And so that suggests how we might draw our count or come up with our counterexample. If we just simply draw our three set Venn diagram so that, uh, for example, we could just simply make sure that there's something in here. And I don't have to put anything in any of the other regions. That should guarantee that the two sets will not come out the same. And so why not just simply take, um, let's see, let's take A to be singleton 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 1 in there, and I'm not going to put anything else in the remaining 7 regions. Okay, so A, if that's the case, then A is going to be 1. B uh, will be empty, right, because there's nothing 
that region doesn't uh, share anything with B, and C should be 1 as well. If we do that, then that should produce a Venn diagram that only has something in that region. It has the 1 in that region, and the picture that we drew above indicates that there's no way that those two sets, those two set theoretic differences can be the same. Okay, so that suggests that the answer is no, the theorem is false, and that this is one possible counterexample. So go back and see if you can write up your proof, um, and when you come back you can see how I wrote mine up. I'm going to use this counterexample. You're welcome to use a different one uh, that this picture suggests. Okay, here's my proof. I start the proof by saying the result is false, and a counterexample is provided by choosing A to be 1, B to be the empty set, and C to be singleton 1. Now I have to verify that it actually works, and so I say we verify this as follows. A set, uh, set theoretic difference B is what? Um, I'm taking A and I'm subtracting off the empty set, so that gives me back the same set 1. B minus C is what? You take the empty set and you subtract off C. Well, that's still the empty set. And therefore, if I do A minus B minus C, that's 1 minus 1. So C was 1, so it's 1 minus 1, and that means it's the empty set. But A minus B minus C is what? A is 1. B minus C is the empty set. If I take the empty set away from the singleton 1, I still get singleton 1. So since singleton 1 is not equal to the empty set, we have an example of sets A, B, and C for which these two things are not equal. And that completes the proof.